last time on Dual Destinies. Let's get moody. In case you missed anything, let's fill you in on this case. We gave Marlin a heavy dose of therapy and got him to admit why he hates Orla. Zora Summers and Marlin rhymes. So what if we were a couple? We may have pushed him too far, though. Because, uh, this happened. Ahoy! What? What? Yo! 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 Ho! Ho! Where is this trial headed? I honestly have no idea. But find out on Dual Destinies, next! The Orca was his true target? But Jack Shipley is the one who died. The Orca is alive and quite well. That... Hmm. He's right. He wanted to kill the Orca, and yet it was Jack Shipley who found it was death. How in the world did that happen? But wait a minute. What if... Yeah. What if Mr. Rhymes wanting to kill Orla was somehow connected to Mr. Shipley's death? <laughs> At a loss for words, are you? What happened to your bravado of a moment ago? Enough of these reckless words, without any basis, in fact. Attention! They aren't reckless words. The basis for my claim is at the real murder scene, the show pool. It's my contention that two incidents happened at the show pool. The attempted murder of the Orca and the victim falling to his death. First of all, in order to kill the Orca, Mr. Rhymes removed something from the scene. And by so doing, he made it possible for Mr. Shipley to fall to his death. What did he remove? This is what Mr. Rhymes removed in an attempt to kill Orla. Clearly, he removed the stepladder. Take that! If you could kill a giant orca with that, you would be the king of the ocean. Clearly, you lack respect for the sea. Ouch. That remark was as salty as seawater. But wait a minute. Orla is a creature of the sea. And how would one kill a sea creature? So that's the answer. So what be your answer? Smartly now, Mr. Lawyer. How did I try to kill the orca? You want to know how, Mr. Rhymes? I'll show the court how. Orla couldn't survive without water. If you wanted to kill her, it's clearly obvious what you wanted to remove. Take that! Do tell me you're trying to claim he tried to kill the orca by draining the pool water? That's precisely what I'm claiming. To help the defendant with the cleaning, Mr. Rhymes took charge of Orla with the plan to kill Orla in the show pool! And because the pool water was drained... It made it possible for Jack Shipley to fall to his death in the show pool! It's H2 over for you, Marlon Rhymes. Yapper, you no good scum sucking lawyer of a scurvy dog. Ah, I tried to kill the orca, you say? Can you even prove there was nary a drop of water in the pool? That day, I was simply looking after the orca. Why would I have the monstrous thought of killing it? Attention! You claim you were looking after Orla in the early morning hours of July 20th. But I don't think you were doing a very good job of it. After all, Orla wasn't given anything to eat during that time. How would you know such a thing? I know because of Orla's record here in the Torpedo Data System. This system continuously records data on the subjects it monitors. From Orla's record, we can tell exactly when she ate or when she didn't eat. Well, sink me. Nobody ever told me about that dastardly contraption. Only a few of the Ship Shape Aquarium staff know about this system. According to Orla's record, she never ate in those early morning hours of the 20th. You plan to kill Orla, and that's why you didn't feed her! Shame on you. Silence. Hmm. 
You're wasting time. What proof do you have of that? Perhaps the orca simply wasn't hungry. Ah, he's right. I don't have any proof. If Orla simply didn't eat, then that would create an inconsistency. Where did her fish go? Her fish? Good question. Where did it disappear to? Fish? What does it matter? What relevance does it have to the case? Cease this stalling by asking inconsequential questions! Stop delving into the depths of the orca's stomach and delve into the case instead. Attention! Now, now, Prosecutor Blackwell, it may seem like a small inconsistency, but it's an issue of great importance, I think. What are you driving at, Mr. Wright? How can the fish disappear? Somebody must have eaten it. So who came to the show stage and ate Orla's fish? I think I might have a pretty good idea. <clears throat> I believe there must have been a visitor to the show stage that Mr. Rhymes didn't notice. Visitor? Are you trying to introduce yet another suspect at this eleventh hour? If you utter more of your careless remarks, Taco won't take favorably upon it. I don't plan to utter any careless remarks. Whether my remarks will actually be related to the case or not, I don't yet know. Don't worry, boss. If Taka comes this way, I'll fend him off. But do try to keep your remarks careful. Somehow, Orla's fish disappeared. Somebody must have visited the show stage. But who? This is the visitor to the show stage! There's only one other animal I know who loves fish. I believe Rifle the Penguin visited the show stage. First an orca, now a penguin? <laughs> Why would you be saying such a thing, Mr. Lawyer? I didn't see Rifle during the wee early morning hours. You think I'm an idiot or something? Do you have any proof Rifle visited the show stage? If you be a lawyer of any salt, show me your evidence. The bottom of Rifle's feet were pink for some reason. That fact is a clue that Rifle was indeed at the show stage. I have to present that piece of evidence that connects Rifle to the show stage. Now to prove I am a lawyer worth my salt. This is the proof that Rifle visited the show stage. Turns out those starfish technically really were dinosaur feet after all. Take that! Oh my, what a cute little sign. Look at all those adorable stars. Kawaii desu, as the kids say. These stars are actually starfish. Ms. Buckler painted this sign. In the early morning hours of the 20th, she left this sign at the show stage to dry. Mr. Rhymes kept an eye on the sign for Miss Buckler while the paint was drying. Aye, that be true. But what be your point? My point, Mr. Rhymes, is that on this sign there is proof that Rifle visited the show stage. Proof of the penguin's visit? I'm afraid I don't see it. Where is this proof that the penguin visited the show stage? Please point it out. Just look to the left of the sign, Your Honor. Take that! A couple of the pink starfish are shaped a little differently from the others. Ah, you're right. They look almost like little leaves. Rifle had pink paint on the bottom of her feet. These little leaf-like shapes on this sign are actually Rifle's footprints. Rifle made these footprints by walking on the sign before it was dry. Ho oh, ho, what cute little pink penguin prints. So there are footprints. What of them? Marlon Rhymes was watching over this sign at the show stage while the paint dried. And during that time, the penguin paid a visit. According to the torpedo data system, we know that Rifle ate something that morning of the 20th. Most likely, Rifle ate the fish meant for Orla that was at the show stage. Well, a snack was a small quantity of fish. Even a penguin could have eaten it all. Be good. Rifle eat Orla's fish? Who be you to say Rifle eat Orla's fish? 
She could have picked up food anywhere. But that doesn't change the fact that I really was at the show stage. After all, I had to help move the Skull Rock. It couldn't have been moved without me. The witness claims he never saw the penguin. How do you explain this contradiction? Both Mr. Rhymes and Rifle were at the show stage, but Mr. Rhymes didn't see her. So where could Mr. Rhymes have been at that time? Ryder Doro, if you aren't up to the task, I could disprove this witness's testimony for you. If I leave it to Prosecutor Blackwell, Sasha will be declared guilty. I can't let him interrupt this line of reasoning! Mr. Wright, let's try to figure out how things looked when Rifle came to the show stage. Alright, Mr. Rhymes was at the show stage, keeping an eye on Orla and the sign. And we know it must be true because he helped move the Skull Rock. And then Rifle came in and walked over the sign. But wouldn't Mr. Rhymes notice Rifle if he was right there? Well, let's think about where Mr. Rhymes could have been. Is there a place in the show stage area from which Rifle couldn't have been seen? Wait a minute. Take that! What? Inside the pool? But you're right. If he was inside the pool, he wouldn't have noticed Rifle. So, are you saying Mr. Rhymes was underwater the whole time Rifle was eating? No, not underwater. When I think about what he was trying to do, the answer's clear. Now I'm finally starting to get the whole picture! Hmm. Just like yesterday, must you two always be whispering to each other? Why don't you admit that resorting to a penguin will get you nowhere? Objection! Oh, oh, I don't know about that. The fact that Mr. Rhymes didn't notice Rifle is a small inconsistency. <laughs> but it's a key point that proves what Mr. Rhymes is trying to do! The penguin is a key point? The show stage pool is very deep. If Rifle came to visit while Mr. Rhymes was at the bottom of this pool, he would have never noticed Rifle. <laughs> Orcas can be out of the water for a short time without sustaining damage. But if they're out of the water for a long time, they weaken and eventually die. So in order to kill Orla, Mr. Rhymes had to drain the pool. And while the pool was drained of water, Mr. Shipley fell to his death. The show stage pool is about 65 feet deep, just like the Orca pool. Without water in the pool, a person could be made to fall 65 feet. Mr. Rhymes probably wondered what to do. If he continued with his plan to kill Orla, how would he dispose of Jack Shipley's body? So he devised a plan to kill two birds with one stone. A what? How? Mr. Rhymes went down to the bottom of the pool and put the victim's body in the skull rock. He then had Miss Buckler move the rock and the body together. Silence. And the witness made a defendant do this somehow without arousing her suspicion? Precisely. Mr. Shipley told Miss Buckler that she couldn't perform in the new show. Miss Buckler became upset and wanted to switch back to the old version of the show. So Mr. Rhymes conveniently suggested that she take and hide a prop for the new show. Mr. Rhymes then manipulated Orla using her singing and lifesaver tricks. to have Orla find the body while Mr. Plume would be there, standing witness. He settled Orla with a false charge of murder so that Orla would be put down! What? So the fact that the witness didn't see the penguin... ...shows that when Rifle visited the show stage, Mr. Rhymes was putting Jack Shipley's body in the rock. At the bottom of the pool, that is. 
Who would have thought the presence of a penguin could prove the witness's actions? It's working! Just a little further now and Sasha will be proven not guilty. Silence! If you think you've won this battle, you are sorely mistaken. Your theory is based on the notion that the witness could manipulate the orca. Witness, can you control the orca's actions? <laughs> of course not. What kind of bilge be that? I'd be but a simple animal keeper. If my memory serves, wasn't Miss Buckler the only one that could issue commands to the orca? Ugh. Hmm. The judge's blade is sharper than the lawyer's. If you wish to do battle with a witness, you'll need a honed blade. Where's your sort of evidence that Marlin Rhymes could manipulate the ogre? Rhymes had to have manipulated Orla in order for his plan to work. But how do I prove it? Well, it appears this line of reasoning has become unsustainable. Objection! Well, fuck me, I guess. A Athena. I've analyzed the hearts of all kinds of people. I have enough experience to see when I look into your heart that you haven't given up. So that objection was my way of speaking up for your heart. She's right. Why would I become a lawyer again only to give up? I have to keep fighting! Thank you, champ. With your help, I've remembered the old right way. The right way? Your Honor! I'm not done here! Hmm. Huh. Uh, do you have anything else to ask this witness? You cross-examined all the witnesses and presented all your evidence. Objection! All the witnesses? Hmm, I don't think so. I haven't cross-examined the most important one, the central figure in both cases. The one involved in not only the case a year ago, but this current case, too. I've never called her as a witness, but it's time to do so now! Who are you talking about? I demand you tell the court immediately. Who is this central figure in both cases? Take that! The defense calls a central figure in both cases Orla the Orca! You intend to cross examine an Orca? <laughs> cross examine an Orca? You must be addled. Damn right I'm cross-examining the whale, and you're not gonna stop me! Silence! This absurdity is beyond the pale. How do you intend to question an orca, a creature incapable of speech? Objection! Orla is intricately involved in this case, and I have every right to cross-examine her! <clears throat> Besides, even if she can't speak, I think cross-examining her will be invaluable! Very well, do what you will, then. But if you fail to garner anything from this little exercise with the orca, I hope you realize that the reward for your efforts will be the defendant's guilty verdict. Mm -hmm. I'm ready and confident. So, cross-examining Orla, huh, that was a bold move, boss. Now all we have to do is figure out how Mr. Rhymes manipulated Orla. That's right. Now it's Orla's turn to help us save Sasha. An Orca defendant yesterday, an Orca witness today. This is truly unprecedented. But even though this is highly unusual, I'm prepared to allow it. Bailiff, ready the witness telecast. We'll have a 10 minute recess while the telecast is being set up.
Leave it to you to think of something like Colleen Orla, Mr. Wright. Well, she's the only one who knows all the answers after all. I just talked to Pearls and she said Orla seems to be feeling fine. Now we have to try and figure out how Mr. Rhymes manipulated Orla. If we put Mr. Rhymes and Orla together, maybe we can get some kind of clue. And I can't forget about that strange set of prints of Mr. Rhymes either. I really appreciate your trying to save both Orla and me. I had no idea Marlin hated Orla like that. I feel like I've been shocked by a torpedo ray. Of course he would hate the killer whale that murdered his girlfriend right in front of him. Oh, Mr. Plume. You've been watching the trial? Oh, yes. I came to make a declaration of war. A uh, declaration of war? No matter what the results of today's trial, I will report the truth in my new book. Even if that truth goes against what I wrote in the Killer Kill Whale. I don't know what the truth is. Not even about what happened a year ago. Dr. Crab. Azura died right in front of my eyes, in the middle of a pirate show. She suddenly fell from the orca's back and began to thrash around in pain. The orca was singing a song, and then started headbutting Azura over and over. Finally, the orca took Azura in her mouth and brought her to the side of the pool. Just before she died, Azura was holding her chest in obvious pain. She was holding her chest? Wait a minute. Could it be? I don't think Orla was to blame for the incident a year ago, either. What? I think the cause of Miss Summer's death might have been... her heart condition. Heart condition? What heart condition? I never heard anything about it! Miss Summers had a prescription with Hickfield Clinic for a heart condition. The orchid didn't kill her. I think it's possible her heart condition did. What? Azura had a heart condition too? I guess she hid it from everybody, just like I did. <clears throat> well, that means... The Orca was innocent a year ago, too! It's just a theory, but... I think the Orca headbutted Azura to check on her. And then did the lifesaver trick to rescue her! <clears throat> So there was no need to put the Orca down after all. So, you really did intend to put Orla down? No. Jack and I were against such a thing from the start. But you said you were going to euthanize the Orca! Yeah, I've been wondering about that. Dr. Crab, about this capsule. It's not a poison, but a sleeping drug, right? That's right. Even if Orla attacks someone, or even if the Center for Dangerous Animal Control demands she be put down, I never had any intention of killing her. I would use sleeping pills to make it look like she was dead and then set her free. That's why I purchased so many sleeping capsules. Oh, that's why? <gasps> I never considered the possibility that that poor woman's death was illness. She seems pretty disturbed to be wrong. I simply want to know the truth. That is why I will tell you who my client is. The day I witnessed the owner's death, I was there at the request of the animal keeper. Marlon Rhymes. That is correct. That day, my client called me to ask me to investigate the orca pool. He must have wanted you to witness what Orla was going to do. Why did you decide to tell us this? My desire to protect my client was standing in the way of the truth. I couldn't allow that. I will be watching to see how this all unfolds. Good luck to you, blue and yellow duo.
Well, that was quite a bombshell she just dropped. And so casually, too. That woman really is a free spirit. Do you remember what you said yesterday, Mr. Lawyer? That you'd expose any secret if it would help save Sasha? I remember. That's my job, after all. Well, I just wanted you to know that I don't blame you for exposing the aquarium secret. It may put me in hot water, but if it helps save the orca, let me clue you in on another secret. Focus on the orca's song. The orca's song, huh? What could he be hinting at? Oh, Mr. Wright. Looks like it's time. All right, let's go back in. You've got it, boss. We're gonna go in there and save Sasha and Orla, together. Let's do it. Let's go. Project.